I hope. Um, today we're talking about five habits that we can uh, engage in to be mentally healthy. Um, uh, World Mental Health Day was uh, Saturday, so um, figured this was an appropriate time to talk about this. Uh, it's something we've talked about in the past, but I figured we'd hit it again today just as a refresher for any new people. Uh, but also, I think it's important that we keep uh, coming back to stuff like this as we go. So I hope your weekend was good. Um, uh, we had a pretty decent weekend. Weather was pretty decent. My Steelers got a win, so we are very happy about that. Um, yeah, just overall, overall, we did okay. Overall, we did okay. Just uh, getting into the fall spirit. We got all sort of fall decorations outside and... Um, you know, uh, just uh, good good stuff all around. So how are you guys? What's going on with you? Uh, Debbie, good morning. Happy new week. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I am on week two of my uh, DMD this week, starting off strong. We have, uh, one of the things we're getting geared up for here is um, Prime Day. We're Prime Days. Uh, tomorrow and Wednesday um, so we're going to have, uh, some, some special bundles that are only going to be available for the prime day, two days there. Um, everything from like a starter pack with like a single book and a couple of accessories all the way up to a define my year package. That is just like, there's a ton of stuff packed into it. Uh, big discounts on all of it. Uh, I think there's a lot of value in these. So look for them tomorrow. We'll be putting them out on Facebook. We'll, they'll be on the website tomorrow morning. They're going, to, they're going to be in an email to you, so keep a lookout for them. But we're going to have uh, some some pretty cool stuff coming out beginning tomorrow. It's our while we're not on Amazon, it's going to be our own little uh, Prime Day holiday, if you will. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Good way to start the fall. Um, good morning. You have the day off finally, so you're here. You're a teacher, yeah. So Columbus Day, a lot of people have today off. We don't. Uh, for our kids, but um, yeah. Uh, happy Monday, Columbus Day, etc. Hi, Sandy. Good to see you. Angel, good morning. It is Thanksgiving in Canada. I used to live in Canada when I was a kid and celebrate both holidays, so I am making a turkey. Very cool. Any excuse to make turkey and mashed potatoes is a good uh, a good excuse for me. I, I, I love it. I love it. Um... Getting low on books that you can count on an order. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Happy to be here for you. Yeah, you'll see it. We're, we're going to have, um, uh, we're going to do uh, like a starter pack that's just going to have a single book uh, with um, with a couple of accessories and a pen and like just to get started for like one month. Uh, but then we're going to have like a, a finish strong bundle that's going to be good to get you through the rest of the year. We're going to have uh, a yearly bundle. We're going to have like a little pastel bundle for people that like the pastel colors. It'll be pretty fun. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. All right. So if you're not on our email list, um, we sent out an email this week uh, with five tips to be mentally healthy. There's also a blog post on defiantlife.com. You can check it out there. But I wanted to get into this discussion because very often, especially people new to our process, very often people sort of, everybody wants to feel special, right? We all want to feel like we're different than everybody else. We're individuals and blah, blah, blah. But the human body is basically the same from one person to the next. There's variables that are different. But for the most part, we are all the same from a mechanical perspective. Uh, when a doctor treats you, he's going to treat you the same way as somebody else. There's variables that we have to take into consideration. Uh, but for the most part, What's optimal for one person is optimal for another. And, you know, we tend to think that we don't need to do certain things, uh, but then we get upset when we don't get the optimal results that we want. Uh, so, you know, and I think we, we need to really simplify this. Or we need to, like, look at the healthy things that people are, uh, at, you know, getting optimal results from. What are they doing at the most basic level? And so if you're a well-rounded person, you know, you probably have good cardiovascular health, 
you probably um, you know uh, prioritize your day properly. You you address even if you're not using like a process like Define My Day, you probably have this ability to focus on what's important to you and move toward a singular purpose, a singular goal. Uh, but you're also doing healthy things to sort of build up that healthy foundation to keep your body working optimally. If you think of your you think of like a, a professional athlete, you know. There's so much discussion about, you know, entitled athletes and, and, you know, they're getting paid millions to play a game and blah, 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 blah. But, you know, there's like this, they, they have to do so much to keep their bodies in the top, the top performance level, right? And so, and they need to study playbooks and they need to understand the game and be aware of different situations. And that takes a lot of work. And they put a lot of work into becoming this sort of, prime specimen of an individual. And and you can take that into any field. Any place you look where somebody is in is the best in their class, it's because they had a singular focus and they probably set themselves up for success by being healthy in a lot of different areas. Now, we know from the book Willpower that, you know, uh, especially in the case of diet, like people that focus very heavily on their on their professional careers sort of use up all of that willpower to to do be successful there so then they let their personal health um, the personal health slip a little bit so our goal in in our process is to be a little bit more well rounded right so that we focus our efforts on what we want in life while at the same time making sure that we're healthy because our goal is to be live long and healthy while being successful in whatever we want to do, right? Because I don't care, look, I can be, you know, highly successful in my professional career, but if I'm in really poor health at 55 years old or 65 years old, and I can't enjoy my successes, I'm going to be really regretful of that. So we want to be as well-rounded as we possibly can. And, and, and if you were to look at these highly successful people, you could think if they could spend another half an hour you know, working on their mental and physical health, they could be even better at what they're doing. So, you know, the, the five things that, that we need to do to keep our mental health in the, the best condition, uh, I'm going to start right now, number one, with sleep. If we're not sleeping properly, we are not, we're setting ourselves up for failure, right? I mean, we need seven to eight hours of sleep. Some people can do six, some people can do nine, but whatever it is for you, if you're waking up feeling sluggish, confused, you're dragging yourself out of bed, you probably need to change something because that carries through through the rest of your day and how much energy and focus and clarity you bring to situations. And also, you know, proper sleep also uh, has a, a good impact on depression, anxiety, uh, they're finding out now that when you get good sleep, you, you, you head off dementia down the road. So there's a lot of benefits to sleep. Uh, it also, you know, you know, get your metabolism in the right place. So we find that people that don't get good sleep are more likely to be depressed, more likely to have dementia or Alzheimer's later on in life, more likely to be uh, out of shape, overweight, obese, uh, unhealthy cardiovascularly. So the, the, the better we sleep, the more willpower we have to get through the tasks through the day, the, the more clear we're thinking as we're performing our tasks. And generally our mindset is much more improved. Now, there's a, a book called Sleep Smarter that I read that I, I that will go through the entire benefit of, of proper sleep and also how to get very good sleep. Uh, you know, basic tips, you know, obviously, you know, no, no electronics, no blue light, uh, at least a half an hour to an hour before bed. Um, you know, keeping your room, your bedroom cold, uh, no light, keep it completely blacked out. We want to try to avoid any light. Um, and then your, your diet plays into it too, you know, making sure you're not eating any unhealthy foods before going to bed. So there's a lot that goes into it. Caffeine too late in the day. We don't want to do that. I know for me, if I have caffeine after like 12, one o'clock in the afternoon, I can't get to sleep. I can't get to sleep. Uh, so sleep, I think for me, it all starts there. I've read uh, psychologists that when dealing with somebody with depression, the first thing they do is get them on a solid sleep routine. You have to start with sleep. If you, if you don't start with sleep, everything else is just sort of 
falling apart throughout the day. It's harder to maintain all of the things that we need to do. So for me, you know, I just filled out uh, last week, I filled out my, my ideal day and I have in there scheduled seven hours of sleep. Go to bed at 11 o'clock, get up at six. If I can get to bed earlier, great. And I get up at six o'clock and that is my schedule to get seven hours of sleep. Uh, if I can get more than that, great. But generally I start waking up and I, I can't really force myself into sleep anymore. Um, but I, I, we've made some changes in my house and by me sleeping better the past couple of weeks, I feel better. I feel so much. I, I didn't realize how bad I felt until I started getting really good quality sleep. And I realized that I'd been sluggish and it was kind of sneaking up on me. I didn't realize it. Um, and even with my diet, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm eating better now. Like I just have like more, like I'm, I'm more clear. Like I'm just not like blindly reaching for a snack that I don't need. I, I'm much more clear in my decision making. So I am like firsthand experiencing this, uh, sleep incredibly important. Start with sleep. If everything else is a mess, start with sleep and fix it from there. Uh, sleep smarter. Sean Stevenson is the guy that wrote that book. Uh, check it out. He also has a podcast. All right. So number two, uh, the second thing that, uh, psychologists use, uh, to help somebody get on a good foundation, if they have depression is a uh, diet, right? And, it, and this doesn't always, you don't have to have depression, right? The goal is to be optimal. So we don't, we don't need, you know, we don't need to be in a bad place. Our, our goal is to avoid it. And if we're in a decent place to get in a better place. So number two is diet, uh, garbage in garbage out. Right. So I, 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 you know, I, I, this is this is the hard area for me. This is definitely the hard area for me. My diet has not been good, especially in COVID times. Things that were just never even in my house are in my house now. But I find that as, if I try to eat the daily requirement of fruits and vegetables, I don't have the stomach capacity to eat much else. Um, you know, like you can sit and snack on chips and your body's going, give me more, give me more because it's not getting what it wants. It keeps getting hungry because you you want more fruit, you want more uh, vitamins and minerals and, and healthy stuff. Your body's going, I'm starving, but you keep feeding me chips. Um, so if you look at it that way, like you, you need to feed yourself some high octane, right? You need to feed yourself some fruits and vegetables and, and, and high quality meats like salmon or whatever, you know, all the stuff that's good for your brain and doesn't have a gigantic sugar impact, right? Low glycemic index is what we want. So we don't want to be sugar highs and lows, right? And what I find is, like, I just get microwavable steam bags of vegetables, and I toss it in the microwave for five minutes and eat one of those. If, like, if I'm starving, I eat one of those. Or always have a salad ready, and I can always grab a salad. And I've been, like, addicted to salad for the past week. I just grab a salad twice a day. And if you eat this stuff, you really don't have room for the other stuff, and your blood sugar levels start leveling off, and, and things are a lot more stable, and you feel more energy through the day, more mental clarity through the day, less crashing. And, uh, I, I, you know, I, I go through this myself constantly. Like, why did I start eating like crap? Cause it's so easy. Um, but every time I stop eating like crap, I feel so much better. Um, but that's, that's like my, my low, that's like my, my hard area. Like the one thing that I just, I, I, I always fall apart at some point. And then once you eat bad, you like start eating bad. So I'm trying to have a healthier relationship with food myself. Uh, and I know a lot of people can relate to that. So, um, but this is the top two things, top two things for anybody is good sleep and a proper diet. I'm not saying you don't eat junk. You don't cut out everything. Don't, don't make yourself not enjoy life. All right. Enjoy your food. Just have a healthy relationship with it. Right. All right. So number three is exercise. And I mean, studies have shown that exercise, um, you know, actually gives you more energy. It doesn't drain your energy. It gives you more energy. Sure, it's exhausting the first couple times you do it, but the better you, the more you do, the better you are. It releases all these, these, uh, 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 uh oh my God, I'm missing the word, but it, it, you know, like you get all these, um, I want to say chemicals, but you know what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> it'll come to me randomly in like five minutes. Um, but you know, yeah, like if you, if you exercise well, uh, you know, like you, you just get, uh, you just get, um, you get healthy all around, you know, strong body, strong mind, that sort of thing. Right. And what they find is it, it's, 
exercise is a keystone habit. Uh, more so than dieting, because people that go on a diet don't seem to be more likely to exercise, but people that exercise seem more likely to eat healthier. Uh, so th there's a, there's a couple of reasons why that might happen, and I won't go into it. But you know, if you if you think about it, like you can you can eat well, but still kind of like mope around the house, right, and really not get that good exercise going. But it's almost like you're getting into a uh, you're almost getting into uh, like a, a different mindset when you're exercising. Like you're getting in, getting into a I am a healthy person kind of mindset. And exercise for everybody is completely different. You could walk around the neighborhood. You could do high intensity cardio. It's just, it's whatever is sort of stressing your body out a little bit more than it's used to and improving your health just a little bit every day. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, as far as uh, improving cognition, energy levels, uh, and, and again, this is another one of those things when somebody's depressed and a therapist asks, you know, are you exercising? If the answer is no, exercise, exercise, get those endorphins going. Like get like if, when, when you do that, you feel like you're accomplishing something and it's having a, a chemical, a chemical effect, a positive chemical effect in your body too. So exercise is our number three. Now, uh, before I get into four and five, I'm going to hit the comments real quick. So I see some people talking in here. Um, Angel says, I'm using the Rise app to help me with sleep. I did a short-term trial of it and then felt it was worth the price. Very cool. I'm not familiar with it. I will have to look that up. Uh, good morning, little late. Got sidetracked ordering dogwood. <laughs> okay, Amy, no problem. Uh, you can always check the replay. We have the replay here uh, on YouTube and we have the podcast. You can download the Defining Life podcast. Um... Lynn says, for me, proper sleep, hydration, healthy diet equals no headaches. Yes, absolutely. Uh, hydration is huge. It's one of our uh, daily disciplines in Define My Day. Um, you know, one to two times your body weight in ounces of water every day is a goal. And again, if you can do that, then generally you don't have room for Coke, Diet Coke, all the other stuff that we end up drinking in a day. Endorphins, right? There you go. Um, endorphins. Uh, Terry says, I think when you're exercise, you become more mindful of your body. And so you think about what you put into it. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a, there's a level of like perseverance and discipline that happens when you exercise. Like you go through this whole experience of, of, you know, like pushing yourself a little bit more. And then there's also that concept of, you know, I didn't work out that half an hour today just to ruin it by having a blow up meal. You know, now some people, like I look at exercise, like I exercise so I can eat bad <laughs> sometimes. Uh, but the problem is when that gets too skewed, you can't outwork out a bad diet, right? You can't outwork a bad diet. Uh, so, you know, you eat, you burn 300 calories, but if you eat five, you know, that equation is bad. So yeah, it, it's, it's keeping that in balance is, uh, is really important. Uh, number four for me, four for me. And when you look at really successful people they read it's it's i think there there are two benefits of reading number one you get that that practice focusing on what you're reading and you know how like you know like you know how you know when you're when when you're not focused is when you read an entire page and have no idea what you read because your mind was somewhere else so that bringing your focus back to that page is training your mind to digest that information, to focus on that information, and to not be all over the place, like we are sort of trained to be in today's world. So you're bringing yourself back to reading that. Now, on the flip side, I think that's where Audible kind of does us a disservice. When you listen to an audiobook, uh, audiobook, you are doing two things usually, like you're walking around the house, you're cleaning, you're driving, and you're listening to the book, and you're processing two types of information. So you're not absorbing it as well, but you're also training yourself to do two different things at once, which is not real good. So while I read or listened to a ton of books through Audible, and I still do, I still think it's incredibly important to have a physical page or a Kindle where you're reading words and have to focus on that and decide, you know, digest that, that singular point of information. Um, you're gaining that ability to focus on one thing. And I think that's incredibly important. But, you know, obviously in this other side of reading is gaining that knowledge, that information, gaining access to people that you wouldn't normally in a, a singular way. 
You know, not like where you're getting information from the news where it's like a clip here and a clip there and a clip there and a clip there, or even on YouTube or even like from me, right? You, you see me, my video Monday, and you got somebody else Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. When you read a book, you're almost developing a relationship with that author, right? And you're really invested in that information you're gaining. And I think that for me, I didn't read. I, I you know, it's, I almost thought of like when people are like, oh, what's your favorite book? I'm like, I don't need books. I mean, how many times did I ever have that thought like, what do I, I don't know, I know what I need to know, right? Work hard, whatever. But that's not the way, it, I mean, there's, there's so many people that have done so much more than we have over the hundreds or thousands of years. They've figured it out already. So we can read that, start where they left off and build from there. But all of us, like, we all tend to just like try to start all over and re reinvent the wheel. We don't need to. We can gain that knowledge and go, okay, yeah, I can start doing this. And then I'll be, I'll be one step ahead of where I was before, and I can get even better. If I would have read 20 years ago, I can't imagine where I'd be right now. But if I wouldn't have started reading five or 10 years ago, I can't imagine where I'd be now. Sort of maybe blissfully unaware but also really upset about some of the stupid problems I'm still running into. Reading to me, that knowledge you gain from a book is just crazy. And we don't prioritize it. I say Warren Buffett spends like five or six hours a day reading or something like something crazy like that. Now, if he can find time to read, he's like one of the richest guys in the world. If he can find time to read, why can't we? Because we have all these other things that are just too important to do it, right? We have laundry, we have kids, we have moms, we have, you know, grandkids, all this stuff. We have to weed the garden, all this stuff. We don't have time to read. We've got time for a lot of other stuff, I bet. We've got time for TV and social media and all this other stuff. We don't have time to read a half an hour, even 10 minutes. Spend 10 minutes in a day of reading and you're just ahead of where you were yesterday. So reading, reading. I, I, I think it's one of the... It's probably the biggest contributor to anything I've ever done. It's what started me down the process of Define My Day. It's what started me on professional development. It's what started me on trying to figure out what my purpose in life is. It's where I read about how beneficial sleep is. Like there, There's just so much to learn. And we can either just say, well, you know, I'll get it from you know wherever as I go. Or you can be intentional about it and get some really good information. So read. All right, and our last one, our last one, number five, something that's been around a thousand years, thousands of years. And for a long time, people just thought it was hokey, right? People thought it was hokey is um, meditation. You know, whatever, whatever, whatever you think of meditation. I'll start you off with this. It has been scientifically proven that meditation grows your brain. They did a brain scan, like a magnetic resonance, whatever, uh, whatever they used. I can't remember what the exact um, the method they used to measure gray matter in the brain. But people that meditate actually grew part of their brains within two weeks. Now, it's crazy because you can't see your brain. You don't know how big it is. You don't know what it looks like. You can't judge for yourself your cognition level. It's, it's just almost not possible. You're looking at it from a, a skewed perspective. And you can't look at your arm and go, oh, man, my muscles are getting bigger, right? You can't look at your brain that way. But they've looked at it. They've studied it. They measured the brain. And within two weeks, people start, two weeks of meditation, people start growing the gray matter in their brain. That's crazy. That's crazy. And I'll tell you, the only way that I knew it was working for me, number one, when I started meditating, two minutes seemed like a lifetime. It was horrible. My mind was all over the place. I, I, it was just, it was, it was a struggle. It was the most frustrating experience. But then after a while, I get to five minutes, I get to 10 minutes, I get to 20. That progress wasn't as impactful as when I stopped meditating. And then I sort of got a perspective of where my mindset was and how much more I almost built up this ability to focus and get less frustrated, be mindful, stop and think before I reacted. Like all these skills kind of built as I meditated. And then when I quit, 
my decline in those abilities was obvious. And then when I started meditating again and it was hard again, I realized, wow, like I got really good at this stuff. I got mindful. I got calmer. I was more aware of how I felt and I was more aware of what was going on around me. And then when I stopped, the mess started coming back, right? The, 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 the disorganization and maybe a little bit of anxiety and like, you know, like you, you just like, it's almost like swatting flies after a while. But when you meditate, you sort of just kind of like, you start to learn how to just kind of see the game a little bit, you know, like the going back to professional athletes, like they understand the game. They see the game, they see what's going to happen. They can anticipate things. I feel like when you meditate and you get good at it, you kind of do the same thing. Like you kind of just, you perceive the world just a little bit different. And again, it's one of those things that people that meditate have higher or better mental health. They have less instances of depression, anxiety. They, um, the, the, you're exercising your brain. You're flexing it, you know? And, 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 you know, this goes for prayer too, for the people out there that pray. Your mind, like they, when they, when they study brain waves, your mind during meditation is almost exactly the same as for somebody that's praying. So when you're praying, when you're focusing on prayer, you're doing almost the same thing. You, your brain, the brain waves line up. So if you don't meditate, but you pray, you know, maybe, maybe it might be altering kind of the, your perception of the prayer, um, you know, how you get into it. Um, but it, it's, it's, if it's, it was an enlightening uh, uh, article that I read about that. Uh, so meditation, it, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. And if you or somebody that has said, it's hard, it's incredibly hard for me. I, I don't, I can't do it. I can't do it then you need to do it. It's almost like an indication. Like if you can't lift, you know, this 10 pound weight, that means you need to lift the 10 pound weights. If you can't do something that healthy people can do, then you need to make it so that you can, right? If you can't walk around the block without getting winded, then that means you need to start walking around the block. If you can't sit down and meditate for two minutes, it's because you need to meditate. It's like, that's a clear indication of like, you can't do it. So you need to do it. Right. It's like saying, I can't, I can't add to four. I, I don't know how to add to four, right? It's two plus two. It's three plus one. I can't, I, I, I don't know how to do it. Well then you, that that's an indication that you need to learn it. So with meditation, if you can't do it, if you can't do it for two minutes, that means you need to do it for two minutes and then you try for five. And as you build that skill, you'll start to see the benefits. But don't just do it and go, oh, this isn't for me. It's for you. It's for everybody. It's been around for thousands of years for a reason. All right, so those are my five things. Those are the five things. If you were, to, if I were to talk to anybody that says, I, man, I just, I, I, don't feel, I don't feel strong. I don't feel straight. I don't feel mentally healthy. I would talk to them about how much they're sleeping, if they have a decent diet, if they're exercising, if they're meditating or if they're reading. I would say meditate two minutes a day, read 10 minutes a day, uh, exercise 15 minutes a day, uh, uh, you know, eat more vegetables, skew more towards vegetables and get seven hours of sleep. Like those, are, those are the, I would do that before anything else. Give yourself a good foundation. After that, we can start to define my day, right? Or we can use Define My Day to keep track of those things. We can start exploring our purpose. Maybe we're reading about exploring our purpose. But if you're not doing those five things, everything else is just going to be a little bit less. It's going to be a little bit less successful. We're, we're only just making it harder for ourselves. All right, I'm going to get into the comments here. D says, where's the best place to order my books? I tried going through the ad on Facebook and my order would not go through. Uh, D, I don't know why that wouldn't happen for you, why it wouldn't work. Uh, but um, if you just go to shop.definemyday.com. Shop Wait, is that right? Shop.yourdefinelife.com. Go to definemyday.com and click shop. <laughs> my goodness, I'm having, I have, now I'm having some mental uh, uh, issues. Um 
hold on. Go to shop.yourdefinedlife.com. Uh, but if you also go to definemyday.com, uh, there's links there too. Uh, and you can you can get the books. Uh, tomorrow we'll be coming out with our uh, our our packages for the end of the year here for Prime Day. So look for, look out for those. Uh, Sophie says, "I just found a new great book to read, Think Like a Monk by Jay Shetty." Yeah, I actually have that over there. I just got it in a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's sort of down my list as far as the books that I'm going to be reading, but I will be checking that one out too. Uh, your beagle is enraptured by this. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Even even dogs uh, listen to me. Uh, I love Headspace. Yeah, Headspace is awesome. I love Headspace. I use it every day. And and in fact, uh, Headspace helps me get to sleep. Like last night, it wouldn't work. But a lot of times, if I need to sleep, I'll throw on a meditation and I'll be out before you even get to like the major part of the meditation. Amy says, I've always been a slow reader. Therefore, I didn't read books very much. I read magazines, but I taught preschool, so I did read uh, child-rearing books, year, uh, et cetera, a uh, year's time. I, I really regret not reading books more. I'm enjoying the books you've recommended and a few others. Because of Define My Day, I'm reading more. Need to try the meditation. So I, I agree. I don't read very fast either. And as I've read more, I've tried to challenge myself to read faster uh, to, because yeah, like a 350 page book would just seem like it would take me too long. Uh, but I've tried to read faster. Um, uh, you know, because if I go too slow, I'm not absorbing it. If I go too fast, I'm not absorbing it. And finding that right speed, uh, is sort of a challenge and I sort of, that's how I sort of stay interested in it. And I'm finally starting my morning with prayer and then reading from the Bible. It's amazing how my mind is opening up. I, I think that's it. I think that's it. If you can focus on stuff like that, uh, it, it's just so, it's so positive. Terry says, I've had a hard time learning to meditate because when I read about how to meditate, I forget what it said when I start to do it. Yes, that's why I like guided meditation. Um, it's I like guided meditation because occasionally they snap you out of whatever thought process you might fall into. And very often, like I will start thinking about like, random stuff like whatever happened in the football game or a conversation I had with somebody or something stressful like you you get um you know you get lost in thought right like the stream of thoughts you just kind of get into the stream and go down go down the stream uh where, where with meditation they're trying to teach you to see the stream of thoughts but don't jump into them like kind of see it and then let it go right and so a guided meditation with an app like Headspace, you know, he lets you go and then he says, okay, now if you're thinking about something, come on back, right? And so if you can, if you can have something to help you out with that, it makes it a little bit easier. Any other book suggestions for the five areas? Oh man. So diet for me, the one that I read that was mind blowing was The Green Brain by uh, Dr. Perlmutter. Uh, it really wanted me to stop eating grain. Uh, but then I started eating it again and now I'd probably need to read it to scare myself out of eating it again. Um, for exercise, uh, da, 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 the, the guy that, uh, the guy that owns on it, ah, what's his name? Hold on one second. I want to look it up for you. Uh, da, 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 da. It was a good book. I can't remember what it is. Own the day. Uh, Aubrey Marcus. Own the day, own your life. Uh, waking, working, leaning, eating, training, playing, sleeping, and sex. Uh, so he talks about it all. Uh, it, was a, it was a good book. I, I like that one. It was a couple years ago that I read that. So that's uh, Own the Day, Own Your Life. Um, and then for meditation, 10% happier by Dan Harris was very good. Um, and reading, well, you just read, <laughs> there's a lot of books we actually have on, uh, nickboris.com. You can find my list of books that I find, or I found most impactful in my life. Uh, so you can check that out at nickboris.com. Uh, it should be like one of the only blog posts over there. That, that page I've not really kept up with a whole lot, but I wanted to put that out there for everybody. Uh, so yeah, 
Uh, yeah, Debra, try the Headspace app. Free trial and wonderful experience. Absolutely. I love the guy's voice. He's got this British accent. It's really good. Prime Day. Yep, look for it tomorrow. Tomorrow and Wednesday. Yeah, and there's our link. So, uh, you would think as many times as I look at that in a day, it would just be top of mind. But occasionally you have some brain farts. Uh, also, been months since I've been on here, so it looks like you did your move. We did, Terry. Uh, we did our move. Uh, we're in the new space. It's amazing. Uh uh, the life-changing impact your environment can have. Um, we went from cramped uh, quarters with uh, not much of a neighborhood to, um, you know, a, a nicer livable space with a great neighborhood with kids. Uh, it's been, it's been pretty cool. It's been pretty cool. So uh, we, uh, we are definitely enjoying our new, new home. Uh, so that's uh, it for me today. I thank you guys all for joining me. Uh, have a great week. Stay healthy, stay happy, keep moving forward, and I will see you guys next Monday.